Hey, are you guys ready for a sneak peek at a brand new Blender feature? I know I am. Let's go ahead and investigate. Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another episode of CGC Weekly here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the Bevel Shader, which is a brand new feature coming to a future version of Blender. If you're a pretty dedicated 3D modeler, you probably know how important bevels are. Bevels can add a lot of realism and a lot of depth to your renders that otherwise wouldn't exist. But bevels can be dangerous. If you add a bevel early on and want to change something later, well, you're kind of out of luck. But fortunately, the Blender developers have thought up a new solution to this problem. It's called the Bevel Shader. Let's check it out. So in order to access the Bevel Shader, we first need to download a Bleeding Edge build of Blender. So in order to do that, we're first going to open up our web browser of choice. For me, it's Chrome. We'll go to blender.org, oop, not dot or perg, blender.org, there we go. Um, and we're gonna go to the downloads tab. If we scroll down to the very bottom, we get this nice red bar that says, go experimental with a nice rocket ship animation. And if we click the latest experimental builds down here, or button down here, uh, we get directed to a new page full of new Blender builds. So you can scroll down to your operating system. In my case, I'm using Windows. So under each different operating system, there is a list of different versions you can download. You just wanna download the Blender 2.79 version, just says Windows 64.zip at the end. You don't want VC or, well, I guess if you have Windows 32, you could try that out. Uh, but I'm running 64-bit Windows, so I'm going to download the very top link. Now, to save time, of course, I already downloaded this and it's sitting on my desktop, so I'm going to exit out of Chrome now. And I'm going to open up the folder and run blender.exe. And now our version of Blender has opened. Perfect. So one very important thing, when you do download this new version of Blender, you will be in Blender Render and all of your settings will be reset to the default. Um, that's all right, that's just kind of what happens. Uh, but in order to actually use the shader, we need to first change over to Cycles Render. And you can see I'm already in Cycles Render because I set this up beforehand. Uh, and I guess I forgot to change that back to Blender Render. So yeah, just switch over to Cycles Render so we can use the bevel shader and then we're good to go. So I'm first going to get rid of the tool panel on the left side here because I really don't want that. And I'm also going to split my window into two. On the left, I'm going to choose the node editor and get rid of that extra panel over there. Um, and on the right, we'll just leave the 3D view window. So in order to actually use our bevel shader, we first need to add a material to our cube. In this case, I already have a material loaded, so I'll just check the use nodes box so we can start using it in cycles. So if we press shift Z over here in our 3D view window, we can switch into 3D view mode. Um, and you can see I have an HDRI image preloaded into this composition. Another thing you'll notice is that our cube has very sharp edges. All these edges are very sharp, very clean, and it looks like it could cut something. We wanna get rid of that, and that's why the bevel shader exists. So in order to first, uh, or actually in order to see the bevel shader, we first need to add it to our node tree over here. So we'll come over to our node editor, press shift A to add, select bevel from our input category here. So now that we have the bevel node added, we can choose the, uh, we can set up the output of our, or the normal output of our bevel shader into the normal input of whatever shader we're using. And bada bing, bada boom, we've got nice smooth edges just like that. And the best part is the geometry of our cube isn't modified at all. Our cube remains sharp cornered and nice and clean, but when we render it, it looks nice and smooth, which is exactly what we're going for. So let's take a closer look at the bevel node in particular and what all these settings do. So we'll start from the top and work our way down. First, samples. Blender defines it as the number of rays to trace per shader evaluation. And if you're anything like me, that means a whole bunch of nothing. So what does that actually mean? Well, the samples basically range from two to 16 samples, 16 being the max, two being the absolute minimum. Uh, the higher your sample count, the more accurate your bevels will be, but the longer it will take to render. Now, vice versa, if you set the samples to two or a very low number, your render will go a lot quicker, but it will be slightly less accurate and slightly less precise. Now, the default value of this slider is four because four works with just about any scene you throw it at, but if for whatever reason you're rendering something and there's a lot of noise along the bevels of your mesh, you might wanna try amping up the samples to something around eight, 12, or even 16 if it comes down to it. 
Perfect. So there's samples. Next up, we have radius. And radius is more or less what it sounds like. It is the radius of the bevel. So a higher number will make the corners a lot smoother. So now you can see it's much more smoothed out. Um, and if we change it up to something like 0.2, which is a very high number, it looks super, super smooth. Now, one thing you'll notice with the uh, bevel shader is it doesn't actually affect the geometry, as I mentioned earlier. So your corner, although it may look smooth, like optically, um, the corner and the geometry is still just very sharp. So I'd recommend keeping the radius number pretty low. But if you see, if I change something, change it to like 0.01, those sharp, sharp corners come back, but they still have a tiny level, little bevel on them. I cannot talk right now. Uh, but yeah, that tiny little bevel does, it, ma it makes a world of change really. Um, but you can choose whatever value you want for radius and more or less it'll come out looking nice. So the last thing we have here on our bevel node is the normal input. The normal input basically acts as a pass through to any other normal data that you might be working with. So if we have a normal map hooked up to this cube and we add a bevel, the uh, be bevel node in between the normal map and the diffuse node, then it'll basically just add the bevel node on top of the already existing normal map. So this is a really great feature. It was actually something I was worrying about when I first heard about the bevel shader, but I'm glad to see that they did incorporate that. So let's go ahead and actually apply it to model and see what it looks like. I took the time to put together four different renders of the same model so we can see exactly what the bevel shader does when put in different scenarios. The first scenario we have here is just the mesh. There is no bevel shader, there are no textures. This is sort of our control render. Next up, we add the bevel shader, but still there are no textures. You can see it doesn't really add too much, but there is a noticeable smoothness to the edges. Now, when we add textures, that's when things change a little bit. This is a render with just textures and no bevel shader, and looking at it, I think it looks fine. I think it looks like a solid render, and I mean of course there are things that could be improved, but by no means is this a bad render. However, when we introduce the bevel shader, we get this whole new layer of depth added to the edges of our image. All the edges become highlighted and are much more obvious and look a lot more realistic and better because of the bevel shader. And honestly, that's why I love it so much. Great job to the Blender devs on this one. So there you have it, an inside look at the bevel shader coming in a future version of Blender. I'm actually kind of curious to see what you guys have to say about this. Do you think you'll use the bevel shader often, or do you think you're just going to stick with the bevel modifier? Leave a comment down below, and I'll be scrolling through those occasionally and probably replying to some of the comments. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next Thursday. Keep it real. Hey, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret here. If you click that button right there, it'll subscribe you to this channel, that way you get updates whenever we upload. Oh, and while you're at it, head over to cgcookie.com and hook yourself up with a subscription for tons and tons of Blender content, live streams, all that.